Um, <clears throat> Zephyros has a single invisibility prepared. I'm looking to see if he's got any other way of casting invisibility. Uh, he can save that for himself. I can make myself invisible. Okay, he turns. Oh, in, I forgot about that. Cool. He, yeah, it's on the Inquisitor spell list. He turns nice, in. Nice. He turns invisible. He uh, he he basically steps into the shadows and turns invisible, and then uh, so Thurgus is looking around. All right, let me see if there are if anyone sees you. Wow. Yeah, if that's the plan, that's something I would cast on myself, if that's all right. But I know we were looking around. Okay, of the creatures that have really good perception checks at, we're going to say, 200 feet from the stage. Uh, who's near? Henry, you can't take your eyes off the big floating sphere with eyes. And you notice that one of the eyes on on the top of her head goes like this, like huh? like is looking up at you and sort of straining. Uh, the the central the central eye seems to be still affixed to a man that is uh, that is proclaiming his love for the floating sphere. Can I fall prone as a free action? Yep. So you fall prone. I think that behold a woman may have seen us. This is the next round where Thurgus you can cast invisibility on yourself. Uh, okay. And then move. Uh, uh, Zephyrus yeah. basically just moves up beside the professor invisibly. I'd actually move at half speed for a stealth check if it's worth it. Just to try and take cover because if, mm -hmm. if he that the beholder saw him yeah um then I would definitely try and like hide behind the throne or something yeah the, like the giant the giant stone crumbly chair that the cloud giant woman was sitting in uh provides good cover for you to hide in uh, so you guys are hiding up there um the beholder thing that little one eye stock does check back a couple of times but it doesn't seem to be breaking character or the uh uh in the moment of the scene what a professional uh it seems to be enjoying or at least faking enjoying the the uh the offering of flowers from bertram the bedazz the bedazzled um pharisee you think you know this lot ah uh, the performers bertram the bedazzled is a renowned baritone and sort of like operatic singer who gets into character by allowing himself to be charmed by his opposing um, uh, actress. He, he works while charmed is, is basically the... Uh, uh, his motto. He's a singer, but... Uh... But uh, he's he can't act. He has to have someone else charm him to act. He could still sing that choir under the bleachers, though. All right, the mob seems to be eating breakfast. Some of them are some of them are moving away from the growing sunlight as if they had lots to drink the night before. Uh, the little executioner has seemed to position a man underneath the uh, underneath the guillotine and just. And just is waiting. He's actually looking towards the man in the throne. The man in the throne looks like he's completely nodded off. His crown slipping from his head. His attire is in. His attire is very, very gaudy, in poor taste, and a little bit dirty. Um, Bertram finishes his note. You notice he looks over and sees that that uh, that uh, the man in the throne has fallen asleep. He then turns and just stands and puts his 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 hands on his uh, on his hips and is now like talking to the beholder. The beholders they're they're having a conversation. It's not part of the the play anymore. It is 
act has stopped now that the audience member of one has fallen asleep. Yep. Uh, are we going to make our move? Uh, we, if we want to make our move, we might want to spend just a little bit more time here magicking up, if you know what I mean. I will. Uh, Is this a private sanctum, do you think? No. Uh, I mean, uh, well, didn't you scry on this throne before? Uh, yes, I saw inside uh, here, so I don't think it's a sanctum. What about down there with the pigs? Uh, if that was a private sanctum, you would not be able to see into it. Oh, good point. Good point. But you do see some pigs rutting around. Uh, none of them look like the pig that... Mm. The pig that was Vincarlo. Maybe, maybe one of them. Maybe this one. It's hard to tell from here. You know, there's one of the pigs actually sniffing at the bodies. I'd like to good hope the the crew with an extended good hope. Uh, I'll extend full strength to you. I'll, I'll crawl over. Okay, the beholder is now kind of lazily floating behind the throne. And uh, you can see that it's saying something to one of the little jesterlings. I'll dual spell casting. Uh, sorry. Uh, the energy one. Resist energy. Okay, so you guys arrived, you're hiding, and now you're casting spells. We're going to say you get three rounds of spell casting before something happens that sounds good uh pretty much everybody has good hope we'll do arcane sight and resist energy check here arcane sight lets you see invisibility right i've never used this one okay the Jesterlings seem to run very quickly. This is in round two. Uh, they have movement rates of, I believe, 120. They run off the stage. <laughs> and into back rooms. I would do a moment of greatness on everyone as well. I'll do a dual casting of haste, and also I'll do uh, displacement on myself. Okay. I'm going to say a prayer to the blood bear. Oh, great blood bear, please grant me a fight. <laughs> and I'll cast prayer on everyone. All right. The Beholder in round three, when you're casting spells, drops down almost behind the pink throne, and you can see is whispering. Uh, the man with the crown kind of snaps awake. <gasps> he He's sitting in the throne still. He looks up at the, um, uh, at the place where you're all hiding uh, in the fancy seats. He wakes up. He pulls out this cone-looking device. Yo, up there! Are you here to see the theater? It'd be really funny if we go through all this effort and they're just totally fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, uh, what is this? Ventriloquism doesn't let me amplify a voice, uh, but it lets me throw one. I do say, show yourselves! We were not aware that we had any new patrons! You do uh, notice that his yelling through the megaphone seems to have the mob starting to, like, like look up at you. Uh, they're they're pointing and gathering together. 
many of the the bards have moved to the edge of the stage as if they're uh, moving in a defensive position. I'm going to put uh, three points into from my arcane pool into augmenting the spell to increase the DC by two, and I'm going to cast Persistent Image silently from up here, uh, and I'm going to have um, some giant... Maybe not the lady, but maybe some other, not a storm giant, maybe, but some some kind of darker, scary kind of giant. Uh, I don't know if there's like shadow cave giants or, or something of that ilk. Give me a, a knowledge uh, uh, nature. Uh, I believe I am at 18 on that. Uh, 25. Okay, there are things called shadow giants. They're scary. If you give me a moment, I'll be able to announce it too, perhaps. Yes, well, I don't know how much time we'll have. That works quickly. Shadow giants are only large, though, but here's, here is one if you want to see what they look like. Uh, can I do a gigantic one, a next size category up? That sure. looks efficient. Let's just make him bigger. Um, yeah, so I'll have him sort of move a little bit in the shadows as if he's coming forward. So this image, um, it's like a silent image, except it's visual, auditory, olfactory, and thermal. Um, it can follow a script determined by me. Um, the script is going to be that after being announced, he will step forward and then attempt to get them to continue. He'll say some perfunctory thing about yeah, enjoying the theater in the shadows and ask them to continue. And he'll just keep trying to gesture on to keep going if they keep questioning. <laughs> okay. Um, this thing comes forward. Announcement quickly. He is a quite dignified fellow lurking in the shadows. Proper announcement any time now. Who's announcing? I cast glibness on myself. Okay. Uh, the beholder has uh, floated up a little bit, and these gangle creatures in their half-ass um, jester costumes um, are climbing this this set of columns very quickly. Uh you have pretty much everyone in this theater looking up at the box. Hello there! Great giant! It appears at our theater of tragedy! Of great pain! Of anguish and torment! has spread to the your lands as well. We welcome all giant kind here. Who might you be? I'll play a little on my pipes and okay. say, this is Orlax. Herald of my mistress. The Grand Fay, formerly ruler of. Uh, what was that pearl that I came from? Garden. 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 Okay, give me a bluff check. Hell yeah. Um, bluff plus 39. <laughs> That's with the, with the plus 20 from glibness. This so is disgusting. Some right. of these people remember meeting this giant. <laughs> Welcome, great giant, 
to the Gold Station Theatre. I am the Emperor of Old Station, Pilz Swastel. And welcome to my theatre. Welcome to the nightmare. From the top, everyone, I of the beholder. And you notice that he jabs at his chair, and the chair starts to walk back off to the side. He's standing on the chair as it's walking away. A bunch of the bards go running off to the sides as if they're taking their positions. And um, uh, Bertram the Bedazzled goes over behind where the chair was and is rooting through like a costume trunk to find something to throw over him. And he looks like he throws a, uh, throws a uh, uh, like a raincoat over him and he grabs a parasol that looks like it's all damaged and kind of comically bent. And uh, the beholder disappears off to the side but is still looking up at you and it looks like they're starting the play <laughs> just fyi uh fair say i put it on you thurgus uh you have haste as well or... oh, okay okay yeah you guys have extended prayer so <clears throat> it's only two minutes but I don't know if you guys have gotten... Have you guys had prayer before? My mistress appreciates the slow things. The patient things. Make the blade drop slow this time, if you will. Make it last. I'm not trying to save the guy. I just yep. want it to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Please continue. We are still in rehearsals, but consider this for you, great giant, a dress rehearsal, an early peek at the tragedies of life and this existence. Yes, continue. For only in Grand Station, do we truly know that all existence is the stage? And the stage is all existence. It was a dark and stormy night. Like it's, 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 it's. it's cliche <laughs> it, it uh, the the bards begin to sing what is interesting however is that uh Piltz does take out a wand and you notice that he does a little flick of his hand and there's actual illusions of uh of a stormy wind that this bertram in his uh in his uh uh in his raincoat his kind of ear flapped hat and the broken um, the broken parasol is trying to do battle through. Uh, it, this is horribly written, Ferrisse. This is like the <laughs> on the verge of being so bad that it might be curious enough to watch. Can can you believe that choir has to watch this drivel every day? It's almost like they deserve it. All right, so you've lied to them and conversed with them a little bit, and your battle spells are starting to tick. So we're going to say, you know, you're you're a few rounds in at this point. Uh, shall we have an opening salvo then, Zephyros? <laughs> who, who do you need me to fireball? And Should we just try and steal the pigs? Yes, uh, well, I mean, uh, look at the pigs down there, but they're... There, there may be a pig off to the side here too, or something. Uh, this pig looks like it's eating the corpses. The other pigs seem to be avoiding the corpses, and they're rooting around. I mean, here's the thing: we we tried the pig not five minutes ago and couldn't see it, right? Yeah. Are they all somehow protected? They weren't yesterday. It's probably not one of them. Maybe it is one of them. 
shall we make a move or shall we let this play out and be on with our ourselves? Curse the Olympians! They Did the only move this place? They only plague mankind as they plague me now in this storm. I am simply trying to get home. Oh, this is a travesty that should be put to an oh, end. No. A real sacrilege to the theater. I'd charm him and fix it, but it's already too late. Uh, Fergus, do you have an opinion? Mm -hmm. You're asking me if I think we should kill all the actors. Uh, the answer is yes. Everyone's a critic. But there's no honor in, in murdering all these things down there. So maybe we just try and follow the tracks down, see if we can figure out where this giant lady went to. Yes, uh, that could be wise. Uh, it does look like a bit of a tussle. Uh, maybe we should avoid it. Okay. Make the most of this haste. Spilling into the back of the room, kind of off to the side chamber, are a bunch of the jesterlings. Uh, you now know where they were headed. You can't help but notice that they all have knives and little daggers drawn. Uh, how many of them are there? There are six of them, and they're they're looking around. Let me just check to see if they can see invisible things. Oh. I think we should put on our own show up here. I can I'll, start the music. I'll cast audiovisual hallucination on them. Okay, I think it's initiative at this point. Well, this misheightened awareness is part of the initiative. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need to add a bunch of things to the initiative because this becomes... You, you get your wish, uh, Thurgis. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> My prayers have been answered! <laughs> This is the best play ever. All right, we will get rid of the assassins. Go ahead and add um, add your temporary mods to the initiative modifier while I add a few things. So jesterlings. Mine's updated. Oh, actually. I should be at plus 16, because I am not size large. Okay, the, the Jesterlings have a plus 12 on their initiative modifier. Make sure you guys updated yours from Good Hope, too. Oh, does Good Hope affect initiative? It's a an ability. It's a it's an ability score check. We check the tapes on that, and yeah, or check the check the writing on that. It definitely does. So temporary plus two on us. Yep. Yeah. Right. Initiative is a dexterity skill check. Very nice. I was looking forward to Gia being there and the stone giant, but okay. <clears throat> but the plant, the... You wanted us to go the night before, didn't you? I did. Yeah, you said the word legendary, and we said, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you did. <laughs> Just because the lady was there didn't mean you have to fight her. <laughs> D didn't it, though? <laughs> We were gonna bring Thurgus with us. Let's just. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the professor's uh, 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 charm and deference to authority, uh, I'm sure, would have gone over well. Yeah, I would have definitely won hearts and minds with him. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> if only we had to come sooner. <laughs> I'm not saying I would have started it, but uh, I would have helped out. <laughs> I would have participated. Oh, and behold, Era. Because that's not a problem. No problem at all. Oh, 
Oh, don't tell me I, I packed my... I already packed my monster manual in there. Let's look. Beholders are not standard. What about beholders who have dedicated their life to the theater? Is that standard? No. <laughs> no. Most of them prefer painting. Most of them prefer the visual arts to the performance arts, hmm? Beholders. Now they've got a good eye. <laughs> yes, but that one I wouldn't look twice at, to be honest. I'm surprised there's a beholder here, sort of, given that uh, I thought most of them were owned by those so sorcerers at the ocean front. Wizards of the Coast. Sorcerers. Okay. <laughs> very nice, very nice. I was like, what is this deep cut? <laughs> God, it's got to be down there somewhere. Where is it? Oh yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure Watsy owns the rights to beholders, so that's why they don't appear in Pathfinder. Well, they actually lore. might. Yeah, yeah. it's one of, their, one of their trademark ones. I tyrants around, perhaps. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right. Oh my god, guys! I don't even remember how combat works with the professor. <laughs> Oh, uh, don't worry. It's gonna get more complicated because we're back on the three action economy. Yeah, and we're a new level, and there's like a ton of new spells and stuff. Oh my god, I have no idea how that. I'm, even... I'm pretty sure you cast in large person or something. That that was a that was a big one. That's like your first round of combat or something. Is that was that true? <laughs> I mean, no. it's on my spell list here. Uh, no, we should have thought about it before we headed out here, though. I feel so small. Oh, you know, speaking of that, I feel pretty big. I feel like I gotta cast uh, reduced person. I don't know how I forgot to do that one. Mm. That's like classic kind of professor move. There we go. I found I found my digital copy of the monster manual, and we'll. There we are. There we go. Okay, so plus that, plus that. All right, plus eight. Let's roll initiative. <clears throat> uh, where are my random numbers? Let's generate some random numbers. And plop those down in initiative. And sort. All right, Thurgus, a bunch of them, and then a bunch of you. Uh, Bukerbeck's not here. Uh, Makranam is not here. Let's see. Oh my God. To Thurgus, what are you doing? You were the first to react to this insanity. Uh, these creatures appear to be very, whenever, they seem to be very blurry. Um, they're darting in and out of the of the shadowy area uh, at the back of this um, at the back of this structure uh, if they appear blurry then I will spend two actions to use warrior spirit and give my weapon heart seeking okay and I will spend a move action uh, I've got haste I'm gonna try and like position myself within reach of a few of them maybe put myself like here ish uh, that's it for me Okay. Uh, haste is an extra attack. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, then, yeah, I'll swing at the closest one to me. Okay. So you basically did two actions to activate your blade, and then you moved up to a bunch of them, and then you're going to attack with a, uh, with a haste attack. <clears throat> that is awesome. I like that a lot. Okay. Uh, so I'll add my bonus. This is kind of silly. 220 plus 
three. There's no. Let me double check. No bard song. This creature, even though it's technically flat footed, seems to be so fast that it's reacting quickly to your attack. 38 to hit. Uh, you end up hitting it. It does have blur. Are you? I have heart. Which gets through the blur, so you stab into this little guy. Um, his DR5 cold iron. I have a plus four weapon. I think it's plus four right now. Let me double nice. check the wording of her spirits. Oh. Yeah, it's plus four because the heart sinking. Uh, let me make sure heart sinking is only a plus one because I get the I get one ability and then the difference. Which would be plus three. Yeah, it's only plus one. So my weapon is currently plus four. So that bypasses cold iron, silver, and adamantine. All right, you almost cut the little thing in half. Thirty-four damage. It is bloodied because of that. And then you appear. And, yeah, I'm visible. And oh. they now have a target, and they are moving very quickly. Uh, that was Thurgus. The hide in plain hearing. Uh, they are singing, they don't quite know that anything is, that anything bad has happened yet. Uh, Pilt Swastel in his, um, Pink Throne. I'm actually going to add Pink Throne to the initiative list. How many rounds has it been since we first got here? Like so uh you guys arrived you had three rounds and then it's like seven eight okay so it's been about five rounds since the third round when rounds per level buff went up so at the end of round five is when the first wave of rounds per level hey swears off on round five is all i'm saying okay uh pilts seems to be concentrating on the uh on the play and his illusions and the pink throne uh, is not doing anything I'm just going to make it go last uh, the jesterlings alright they're going to get their, their vengeance so Thurgus do you have uh, uncanny dodge I do not okay so they're beginning to zip in do you have a uh, reach right now? I do not. Okay. These creatures have 120 foot movement, and I believe we said for a spring attack in the system, you get to move twice and attack in the middle. So they're kind of doing this zippy thing in coordination. <laughs> uh,. Oh, pairs of them hitting from Yeah, opposite sides? this one's stuck though because it can't. It can't do spring attack without an AOO. Um, so he's just providing flank for a bunch of them as they as they come in. And then he's going to step, step, and move 120 feet into the into like side passages. So they, they attacked you a bunch of times while flanking, but have run into like these uh, picture that there are um, uh, side passages Oops. that lead into this place, and they just kind of zipped into the into the dark reaches of the uh, of the edge of this building. Uh, all right, their attacks. <clears throat> there were six of them. And they were flanking. You see 33, 34, 28, 20, 20, and 22. Oh, look at those bad rolls. Those all miss. Okay. Oh, your, your armor's all scratch up. They're all going for your ankles and your Achilles tendon and you, uh, the back of your calves. And it's like, shit, 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 shit. You're pretty sure. You're pretty sure. Oh, yes. You're pretty sure that they were also using poison. And then they go, shit. They scatter, they scatter off to the edge. You can hear the little jingling bells. Run in terror, little creatures. I will hunt you down. Uh, apparently it's a bit echoey up in here. You do notice that the mob has all turned up at the yelling of, I will hunt you down. <laughs> uh, and people seem to be a little bit confused. Uh, the little guy next to the, uh, next to the tall knife, actually it's going to be jabbier and the tall knife. 
Uh, it doesn't do anything. Ferrisay. Um, there, there's growing confusion from the ensemble, um, but no one is quite attacking it except for the Fae that came up here. Uh, you could spend an action. I know it says free, but I think in the other campaign we we made knowledge checks in action so that it's actually, you know, you're not rolling a gazillion of them in one round. Uh, you could make a knowledge check on the little jingly things, or you could just let Thurgus chop them to bits when they... Uh... Yeah, let's figure out what these things are. Okay. Um, Actually, no, let's figure out what they are next round. Sure. This round, I'm going to bless Thurgus with protective luck, nice. which is two actions. Nice. Uh, and I'm going to start bard song uh, with my pipes. Okay. A little echoey up here. That seems to annoy many of the musicians and performers on stage that there is a competing performance. Uh, and it looks like the the play is stopping when you cast your bard song or uh, you... if people are turning and stopping the performance and turning up to the box the yep. illusionary shadow giant will go please you must continue okay uh give me a bluff at a plus four uh is that the, the name yeah professor i mean i what do I have for bluff here? Plus eight. Whoa. One D twenty plus. You're, you're becoming practice at lying. Yeah. Oh, whoops. Sorry. Wrong syntax. Oh my god! Terrible roll. <laughs> All right. Uh, the play seems to have at least stop, or some people are still singing, and others are trying to get their attention that something's something's wrong uh the climbing creatures end up climbing to this upper level and then they're moving along the sides they might be heading in your direction the angry mob is milling around they they're looking up at the giant they don't seem to be uh taking many actions some of them are yelling hey be quiet up there quiet maybe a couple of pebbles got thrown uh zephyros just say when maybe delay a little bit uh, we have a few moments or so shall we begin now there's like four of them grouped up to the north these things yeah, these things obviously were tying people up and shoving them into the guillotine. So yeah, maybe maybe Zephyrus can fireball. Oh, I was talking about the the uh, jesterlings. Oh, they ran off into into dark corridors. They're they're oh, okay. not they're not visible at this point. Got it. Not, nothing wrong with killing people that are that are guillotining folks. Uh... Two of them went one way, and one of those was the injured one, and then four went. To the right way there's there's Got like it. a walkway that is inside uh inside here yeah i'm just the map i'm good yep uh zephyros could fireball these gangly creatures before they arrive i, I don't know if anybody is gonna stop him i don't know. try and identify them as his his one action and then fireball is a second in case he wants to use a different element yeah Let's see. Oh, that's a good thought. Oh, he actually has the skill. They're called chokers. They choke people to death. Oh, they mean to fire? No. I've had it. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> <laughs> As Zephyrus appears, a massive fireball goes rocking off. I think Zephyrus's fireballs are even more potent now, 10th level. Uh, I believe his staff increases the fireball caster level to 11th level. Yep. Um, once he's intensifying, it's still capped at 10d6, though. 
Yeah, uh, 10d6. He is not intensifying it. I don't think he has that. Evoker is half his level, which is 5, so 10d6 plus 5? 10d6 plus 5. Go ahead. Oh, you want me to roll? Okay. Yep. 41. Do you need me to look up his reflex save? No, I got it. Um, The DC is... For evocation spells, it's 20 plus spell level, 23. All three of those, all four of those creatures failed and are burning badly. Uh, They have, they all take the 41 damage and are badly, badly burned. Uh, They're still alive, but they're not coming your way anymore. Nice shot. The play must go on. Continue. Uh, there's a few old tiles and uh, maybe some of the the stupid costumes that are now burning uh, that that rain down upon a couple of these uh, old station bards. Um, definitely the fireball going off and the appearance of of Zephyros high up in the uh, noble seats, and let everyone in this area know that hostilities are afoot. You Professor. must go on with the play. Continue. <laughs> Send the repeating illusion that only has this one response to anything. Okay. Um. Does he have a move or anything left, or is he done? He's probably done, right? So, concentrating on a spell I normally is a standard action, I believe. Hmm. So, are you concentrating on it, or are you, is your hand... Oh, the, the persistent illusion it has, it has, it follows a script. It doesn't, it doesn't do any... I don't have to do any input since I cast it. Okay. It will just continuously try to get the people to continue. <laughs> get the play to continue. Okay, yeah. all right. So, uh, then you don't, have to, you don't have to do anything. You've got your full actions. Yes, is it my turn? Yeah. Okay. Um... So, uh, standing, will standing use my whole move? Uh, standing is a move action. One of your okay. three moves. Yeah. Um, so, as a free action, I'm going to quick draw Bacob's wand. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do my dual spell casting to do enlarge person plus reduce person. Uh, I'll do the enlarge person on uh, Fergus. I think your dual spell casting only works on things that are one action, not one round. Uh, isn't enlarge person? It's a whole pool round. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool I th- round. Do wands speed up those spells though? It's still... wands. Wands take the same action to activate that the normal cast time is. Uh, potions and extracts, I think, are one standard action to consume. But I think it like because I think a wand of restoration takes three rounds to activate, doesn't it? I, I do not know, uh, but it seems like that is a full round action, though. So that would be three actions to do in large person, huh? Yep. How? Uh, it's a one round cast time, not a full round action. I thought. So what did so, it take? Well, no. Of one rounds in this system happen at the end of your three actions. Oh so, yeah, that's right. You, you can God, summon. So good. Yep. <clears throat> uh, I, I'm looking into. Thurgus's eyes to see just how bad he wants that enlarged person. Just... Badly. <laughs> he just like tanked all of these little dudes and he's just like, I'm oh, so great. Blood bear, bless me with your gifts. And then I will just spend my round casting enlarged person. Yes. Silently. From the floor. Okay, it, it, it is a close action. It is a close spell, so you can enlarge person from the floor. Yeah, you just roll over and enlarge person. You're still <laughs> invisible. Uh, yeah. And the pink throne uh, is moving and is moving to the center here. Please resume the performance. What are you fools doing? It's not real! It's not real! Get them! They saw through my DC 30? <laughs> uh, Pilts did. A DC, Please. wait, say DC 30? Uh, okay, I need to check again. 
please. You must continue on with your exquisite play. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it loop? Isn't it the same thing over and over and over again? You it, must continue. It, it pre like pretty much, yeah. Just like it has. A okay, few so Pilts <laughs> Pilts with some powers does have a plus eighteen on his save. He gets a twenty. <laughs> Okay, instead of yelling, get them, kill them, he's... Stop interrupting! Stop your music! It is not part of it! We do not accept new applicants in this manner! He, he's, he's, he's having a freak out about you interrupting his, his masterpiece. It's pretty Continue rude. Continue yeah. on with your performance. Stop the piping! Stop the piping! <laughs> I mean, I, this giant's gonna go all day saying this. So. All right, the I can, I can linger it. The <laughs> old station bards are 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 casting bard songs of their own. Uh, some of them are, some of them are casting spells, and uh, the group on the side where the um, the implement of execution go invisible. Uh, the two in front are casting bard songs and kind of retreat to guard uh, pilts. And the What's an old station plus Bertram. Oh, these bards go running off stage in the same in the same direction that the uh, the jesterlings ran. Although they are not as quick. Bertram. In his baritone voice. Cuts clearly through the. Uh, through the rabble. Perhaps because of the acoustics of the stage. Do not worry. Behold Ara. I will protect you. And he's rooting around in this big. In this big trunk. And he's like pulling up props. And probably looking for weapons. Thurgus. You can hear the jingling of these little creatures, although you don't see them. You might have to go charging down one of the halls to try to find them. Um, things are starting to grow a little more chaotic down in the uh, in the theater section, and the crowd's growing unruly. You can hear some of them yelling, almost like they're they're parroting Pilt Swatstall's uh, um, words, and they're all yelling, "Stop the pipes!" Uh, we have not identified with these creatures are yet, right? Nope. Okay. Uh, I'm going to activate my judgment as a single action. I'm going to pick AC, uh, which, let's, let's see what this is, uh, Sacred Protection and Sacred Justice. So plus AC, actually, just Sacred Protection and uh, Sacred Purity. So saves and AC. Uh, and I have double judgment now, so I'll activate that. Uh, that's one action. Um, I'm actually going to use um, my other two actions to ready an attack. Yep. So first thing that comes within reach of me, uh, I'm going to smack it. That's it for me. Okay, so you can ready a single action. So yeah. an attack is only one action. So... Uh, you could have taken another action if you wanted before readying that attack. Can I ready two attacks? No. Nope. Then um, another action. I'll just five foot step back then. Okay. Get a little bit closer to the party. Yep. Uh, so you've got a ready smack. Uh, the hide in plain hearing. Can you counter song another bard's bard song? Uh, not not that I know of. Maybe it's got an auditory component, right? Mm. Counter magical effects that depend on sound, but not spells that have group. So counter magical effects. Hmm. May use the bard's performance. To, oh, okay, you're not and you're not saving against it. So no, that's not that's not it. All right, so this group right, yeah. of ladies does move forward amongst the pigs. Uh, 
leaving some of their instruments behind or some of their sheet music. They, they kick the pigs out of the way. They don't seem to like the pigs. Rude. Um, and somewhere inside this group of like 20 or 30 choir, somebody did cast a spell towards you. Now, I need to look at what that spell would be. And whether or not it has range. Just barely. Okay. So a yellowish kind of blob of magic flies towards the shadow giant and explodes with a glittery a ball of dust. And I'm going to say uh, if I roll a one, it's towards Ferris's side. Two, it's square on with the giant. And three, it's on the other side. So only on a one will this affect Ferris. Unfortunately, Ferris is glitter dusted. All right. And you need to make a will save. And the will save of the oh, yeah. troop of bards is... DC seventeen on the will on the will save for uh, the glitter dust. I've got on here a plus fifteen. Let me make sure that's right. That seems high. The glitter does not affect the giant, <clears throat> and they've now interacted with your illusion, your DC thirty illusion. Now the things about troops of ladies. Is that they've got a good save collectively. Please, you, you must continue with your performance. And they're all screeching and hollering, false liar illusion. Please, why won't you continue with your magnificent play? <laughs> You know, I think that might be right. I think I might have a 15 will save. Seven. Okay, so don't roll a one. Plus the stat. Right, I didn't update the magic. Yeah, okay. Sure, sure. Um, yep, I've got that one in there. That's that's what brings you up to, to 15. Uh, 28. Okay. There are fairies up there! Fairies! Oh, I'm afraid that this place is friendly to the unseely court, says Pilts. Uh, Pilts. Please, go on. <laughs> That's pretty funny, man. <laughs> As it just theater burns down around us. <laughs> you must continue. Must <laughs> the play, it must go on. <laughs> Break our leg. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pilts, who is not ready for a fight, I think casts a spell and he turns invisible the jesterlings uh, spellcraft 26 is that uh, regular or um, pilts improved uh, 26 the DC of the spell is 23 he just cast greater invisibility The Jesterlings. All right. Uh, the injured one runs back, stops at the opening of the uh, of like uh, the hallway that he disappeared down. He's got this little bead in his hand, and he chucks it at uh, he chucks it at Thurgus. Oh, so rude! Is it a ranged touch attack? Uh, I have to check. Or if, if it's a if it's a uh, fireball, it's not. 
it's uh, it's a no it is a once the page loads that'd be a force yep it's a classic it's a small black sphere like a lusterless pearl that gets hurled at Thurgus. Uh, given that he sees two people, he's actually going to hurl it so it hits the two big guys because it explodes in a ten-foot radius. It's a ref it's a reflex save. It goes like that. Um, Zephyrus reflex save is plus twelve. No, never mind. He's doing it directly on Thurgus because it's actually has a potential of capturing Thurgus. Oh. Uh, the DC of the reflex save is 16 as a, 31. As there's an explosion. Um, okay, so you don't have evasion. I do not. You take, take half. you take half of 21, which is 10, and then you get blown in a random direction out of what is a spherical area of force. Uh, so let me draw a sphere here instead so there's a bubble that they tried to capture in, you in after the explosion and one two three four five they ended up shunting you in this direction uh christopher's just riding in a bag right yeah okay uh so this guy took out the sphere ran forward and hucked it Okay. And then there's a swarm of these little fuckers that come in. You do get a readied action on one of them, but they're using their 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 uh, spring attacks on you. Yeah, um, as long as they're attacking me, I won't. They, the others won't provoke. Uh, this will be a power attack. Okay. <sighs> Forty-eight to hit. Which one do you target as it comes in? First one that swing comes at me. Okay, I'm gonna roll a random number. It's the one setting up the flank for all the others. Bastard. Okay. <laughs> it's good for you. 49 points of damage. Ah! All right. They have 50 hit points. So you knock this thing <laughs> to one hit point, blasting it across the room. And it still ends up providing the flank. Okay. So there's five of them. There's five of them to come in and they'll, they'll uh, start attacking you with their daggers. And... Point of order. Yep. If he is providing a flank, he's not using spring attack. So he's using a move action to base me. Uh, they are spring attacking simultaneously so that they are attacking one side from the other. So he only gets to provide a flank with one. You are correct. Uh, the the others have to come in like this. Uh, actually, my, my, my question specifically was because he, he's not using spring attack. He's moving. I, I guess I don't understand how the combat works. Does he take his turn and then, like, ready an action to jump out? Or are they just all on the same initiative? And they're all on the same matter? initiative, and okay. they're coming in in pairs. I think you're right that okay. he, he can't linger without staying there to provide flanks for the other ones that come in. I'm not, I'm not worried about they're it. They're not pairs. Okay. So uh, they're they're well-coordinated, and they're evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Works for me. Protective luck, so they got to roll twice and take the worst. Oh. Well, yeah. any of them that hit can roll twice, I guess. Yeah. None of those hit. Yeah, okay. All right, so they all clink at you. I'm going to say that this one, because he was kind of shocked a little bit, he ends up finishing his movement there while two go running that way and two go running this way. And they end up just scratching your... Uh, your sh your your shin guards understood okay that was the uh jesterlings beholdera is beginning to climb she's really slow moving these little weird jets opening up underneath her like little uh like little orifices that are kind of spouting uh colorless gas it's rising up like it's expelling gas to propel itself uh she moves slowly 
Like, I mean, 20 feet per move. There's one move, and two moves, and three moves. And she's, she's coming. Jabbier and the Toll Knife. Uh, he gets frustrated that the fighting's all up there, and just just clinks the end of the tall knife with his uh, with his kind of prods at it with his glaive, and the tall knife only too eagerly just goes, <laughs> and the blade uh, chops off the peasant's head. Hello, Jasper. There is an infernal like fume coming out of the sides of the toll knife um and the eyes are flicking around and looking down you th you think it's bending its teeth into a grin uh that that thing looks more than just animate uh Ferrisse. uh i feel real exposed right now so i'm going to cast obscuring mist okay a 20 foot spread from myself and then i'm going to flutter um, then i'm going to cackle like that yeah you're gonna cackle um cackle to keep the uh, yes i'm gonna cackle the protective lock. lock okay um and i will uh Range on your hexes is or on cackles thirty feet, right? I think I'm at forty five right now because of the beat of force. Uh, in that case, I won't cast the um, I won't cast the spell. I'm at forty. Uh, sorry, I won't cast the obscuring mist. I'll move uh, to uh, share a square with Zephyros. Yep. Um. I will cackle and cackle I'll... again. Yeah, no, uh, that I probably could. Um, what else? Let me think about this. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> it's a move action. Yep. <laughs> I will linger the bard song okay. and say, "Apologies on behalf of my patron, uh, the esteemed." Uh, uh, Grand Fay, uh, for the interruption. Please continue. Yes, please continue. L lingering <laughs> the bard song. The play must go on. <laughs> All right. The the heavily injured choker brutes go running for the bowels of the building to go lick their wounds. They are not interested in continuing to fight. <laughs> Seems appropriate. Uh, the angry mob. Uh, there's one group of them that is plunging towards, like, an exit. Uh, it's taking them a while to get there, while others are milling around, and some of them are, sh are chucking garbage up your way. They're still yelling for the pipes to stop. They're kind of lingering, so they're still making noise. Zephyros. Look, wait, I'm not going to what to do but uh two of those mobs that are throwing trash at us they're within a 20 foot radius just saying <laughs> <laughs> the choir are talentless hacks <laughs> yeah. the pigs. Z Zephyrus doesn't seem to be eager to commit mass murder with his fireballs the, the... they're called chokers and they're also aberrant creatures. Yeah. Uh, okay. What about uh, is going to think about the choir yeah. No, are... Zephyrus is going to look at the other aberrant thing on the battlefield, and mm. try to recall what he knows about beholders. Fair enough. He rolls a net twenty, gets a thirty-two. We should be very concerned about that thing. Magic. It can make magic go away. I am very concerned about that thing now. <laughs> Her big eye. It's looking right at us. Zephyros is now backing away <laughs> into the chamber. Uh, 
and he is going to probably cast well uh, maybe Zed knows what's going on says Zephyrus Zed. The man tied to the chair. Oh yeah, he's been he's being dragged. Oh, I'm sure he's Zed knows what's going on. Dragged yes. around by the throne as it was moving around. Uh so yeah, Zephyrus moves back and is going to take a swipe at one of the uh uh at one of the jesterlings, so he hastily moves to here and will swipe with his side potentially hitting one of the jesterlings he does and with its one hit point left he kills it you stole my kill professor that's all right uh yeah so i am going to stand for one of my actions okay because you can't fly while being prone, right? You can't be prone while flying. So you could, if you were, if you had the fly spell, you could just fly. You could the prone state. You could Peter oh, Pan your way out of prone without spending have, an action. I have fly going, so I have a okay. free. Okay. So you, so you could, so you could move and remember your haste. I am going to move somewhere. We'll do that last though. First, I'm going to. Uh, spend three points to increase some DC uh, by two, and then I'm going to cast silently major image. Um, I sent you a token in chat, Marty. I, I think um, I think I'd like to go with that. Uh, I think I want to put it in sort of this area where the bleachers turn into the bottom seating uh it's going to burst burst <laughs> what, what is this thing called uh we're gonna call meatloaf album but it just didn't quite work so uh, we ended up with this medieval painting um, okay. But it's going to be some demon like crawling his way from the flames out of like the pits of hell. We'll make him be where, uh, right, like where the uh, bleachers meet. That yeah, let's make him. Uh, so right now he takes up ten feet. Uh, we've got 14 10 foot cubes. I want him to make make him as big as possible. He's not gonna move around much. He's just gonna like gout flames and go like ha, 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 you know okay okay so you you cast your illusion and you notice that one of the the illusion seems to be cut off and only, one of its wings, one of its arms, and its uh, and one of its legs, and a bit of fire where it appears, is visible. It's like it's completely bisected, and you get an idea now that there is this hazy cone that is coming out of the beholder that is completely negating magic. I believe we found what well, we couldn't scry on here earlier today. Uh, Perhaps your illusion's there. It's just right now. Oh, the only piece of it that's showing is this really odd uh, clipping error. <laughs> I'll try and shift it over to the side of the like uh, usable field and like gesticulate wildly and with lots of flames to fill the void. Try and make a big scene here. Uh, okay 
is 28 to disbelieve him. Seeing that he's sort of clipped, I'll kind of try and, you know, make him thin down a little bit and try and, like, shimmy his way over onto... <laughs> yeah, so so you're, you're scaring a bunch of pigs at this point in time as this weird illusion thing is, is somewhat compromised uh by the um by the hazy aura coming from the central eye of the feminine um beholder named beholdera maybe that's a stage name you're not sure um so that was the professor's turn unless there are other things that you're doing uh, i'll pass concentration of the illusion actually i'll hold on to it for the second but i'll 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 move somewhere Uh, i want to get out of sort of this box we're in um there's a way out the front of the box there's two side passages so so there are there are like little doors that lead down these hallways um and then there is a uh, a staircase in the back that you could go down these hallways are open on the front it, it looks like i can see still the stage and everything uh yes uh, there are also little stairs that go down to the next level below and that's where the little quick ones have been running into the darkness uh i'm just gonna not go down the stairs i'll duck out this one and hide towards the top like next to one of the pillars so i can still see in on what's going on so the the you go running out and then you could see you could see the at least the entrance way of the uh this the seating area where you were and you could see just the edge of the field of the beholders um anti-magic cone is like nipping at the toe of your giant as he's trying to as he's trying to tell people to continue with the play the pink throne seems to have a mind of its own and it it's um How do we get up there? It's moving forward, and it doesn't seem to have a care for dragging the guy who's uh, bound to the pink chair. Uh, he's moving over to here, and Pilt says, Gather around the chair like we've done before! Uh, you notice that some of the bards do go running for the chair. Pick me! Pick me! The ones that are invisible are disappearing into the uh, into the wings. Exit stage left. And uh, Bertram, do not worry, my maiden fair. I will defend you and go with Pilts to squash thine en- thine enemies. These bards are making their way towards certain doom for them. Um, pigs are running around like crazy. This one seems to look up from the corpse that he was snacking on and goes back to eating the corpse because he's a pig. <laughs> and if it's a polymorph being, likely thinks he's a pig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll just modify memory on that. <laughs> Ready to actions also don't change your pip and initiative in the system, which is interesting. Oh, so nice. we're at Thurgus again. Okay. Um, I mean, a question for you guys. Do you think I should try and take this thing out? This little guy that's standing there, kind of shocked, injured, threw the little bomb at you. I, it, they, the rest of them might decide that it ain't worth it. Because I've got that bow I could swap to. I'm just not, like, great at bows. I don't know if you guys are planning on taking care of this this beholder or not. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll try and do something with the beholder, right? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Try something. We we got time. It's moving slow. It's we're we're gonna be within range and lose a shitload of buffs. Is my point? Is all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, that's possible. I kind of feel to the back of this place. Yeah. All right. Oh, move attack move. Well, like my thought was like move action gain deadly aim, move action draw the bow. And then fire twice. It's it's certainly an option. Yeah. 
Um, all right. Here's what I'm going to do. Uh, Thurgus thinks that we should back up. He doesn't like the idea of anti-magic. That's, that's not fun. <clears throat> so what he's going to do is if he five foot steps here, that's one action, Yep. and take a swing at the Jesterling, he thinks he can finish that off. Yeah, you are in range of the Jesterling. The Jesterling did have to like run out from cover to, to blast you with the with the bead. Uh, okay, so speed of power attack. Uh, that's a 44 to hit. <laughs> Beating the hit. AC of 27 and the yeah, blur three. effect with your... <laughs> <laughs> with your heart seeking blade ah, you, oh, hit, you angle it down in an angry chop 44 points of damage getting through its, oh. getting through its damage reduction you you cut it in half at a very jagged angle and it dies is that my haste attack is that how that works i have two actions left yeah you can choose whenever you want to do your haste attack so you you can you can call that your haste and do your two actions yeah i'll make that my haste attack uh i'm going to move 60 feet down this corridor and then i'll spend another action to move another okay so you've got two choices you could end up where the professor is which is open to the air or you can go plunging down a staircase to a darker hallway and the darker, I see which... the darker hallway is where the jesterlings went down into. they went down into I'll... the dark i'll go down to the darker hallway okay uh can you see in the dark uh i have i have a discovery torch active so i have a third level light spell Oh, okay. So you, you go down there. Yeah, you you reveal uh, you reveal the creatures are standing in the hallway. They they look like they were ready to go running back into the room again and tried to stab you. And they seem surprised that you're you're down here. How how far away are they? They are at the end of uh, they're twenty feet away when you get to here. Okay. Yeah. I I'll just take as much movement as I can to get to them. So you're hasted. So you were where here? Yeah. Uh no here. Yeah, so what's your normal move? Uh, 30. So I'm speed 60. There's one move. And you can get right up to them. Yeah, I'll base them both. That's that's perfect. Okay. Because they can't spring attack me, right? Nope, not when they start off adjacent to you. Perfect. Love it. Uh, oh, they they can step and run away, which I think is what they're going to do. The hide in plain hearing. Well, Beholdera is doing her thing. I think they're kicking up a bard song. Um, blessed be the tragic, blessed be the tragic. They're, they're, they're blessing the tragic. Please continue. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> you can't cackle me over here. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> uh, you got a couple rounds on it. I'll fortune you if the protective luck runs out. These guys are maybe the biggest, the biggest risk in terms of just like attack rolls against you so that's probably fine oh is that beast uh all right <laughs> sorry the dogs that's fine pilts is reading an action for some reason the jesterlings the jesterlings come running in and attack Zephyros, and then go running away. This is the little one. Oh, the hunter. <laughs> the mighty yeah. hunter. I think Zephyros just got nicked. Oh, crap. I'm failing my job. Uh, he has pace. You. And haste. I've got him at an AC 25. Yeah, AC 34. Mm, I think that gets it. Not a critical threat. Okay, so 1d4 plus 10 for their dex plus 1d6 for their sneak attack. All right. Uh, one for their magic. So he gets nicked for 21. He's got a bleed of two. Ooh, nasty. She could borrow a healer. <laughs> Shit, I just ran away. Oh, that's right. We did bring a healer. But now we got time. And uh, he needs to make a fortitude save, which I think with his large S he can make. Ooh. Oh, no. 
He's at plus 17. Is that with prayer? Yeah. Okay. He doesn't fall unconscious. That's good. That is good. It was close, though. <laughs> I guess he would have to run. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. Uh, they they, they kind of laugh as they nick him, and they, they basically spring attack away and go into the depths again. These two don't like how close Thurgus is. Okay, watch this. They step. They're still threatened. Fuck. <laughs> they, they step. They get... Because they're speaking so quickly, um, indeed, these things are quicklings, uh, one of them decides he's just going to jet away for 120 foot movement, and this one instead pulls out a little bead and chucks it at Thurgus. So they get four actions? Uh, no, he quick draws the bead. Oh, nice. You need another reflex save? Uh, yeah, yeah, he doesn't have to roll to hit, so yeah, it just explodes around you. 37. And you manage to avoid. Give me a D8. See what... Move me closer to One. One is up, so you... Yeah! <laughs> he threw it behind <laughs> you. It went through your legs, exploded you forward. And uh, 5D6 damage. You take half of 20, which is 10. <laughs> the jingling of bells and the possibly quick-moving creature is just a blur, but you're... Your heart-seeking blade uh, is working well. Behold Era with her little uh, spigots shooting out air from her bottom side. Uh, she moves a little closer. I'm going to undo some drawings here. Let me put that, that bead oh, orb back. Bad. And she begins to move forward. And her eye when her glance touches Continue. All those within the yellow cone have the benefit of no magic and no magic items. Active spells stop. They're still running, they just don't have any effect. You said, like, do a, a skill check. It wasn't a free because then we would do a million skill checks. Did did I hear we get one free one per round? No, you, uh, it's a move action to stop and think about a thing. Okay, so it's one action to do a skill check. Yep. Behold Era. Uh, Jabir and the Tall Knife. Okay, so Jabir runs over towards Pilts, says he's ready. Pilts takes his ready to action. Pilts can take one, two with his throne three is jabir unfortunately he doesn't he's not able to take bertram because uh jedediah is actually um <laughs> attached to the chair so he miscalculates his dimension door and dimension doors over here how dare you interrupt my masterpiece how am i going to perfect this if I'm always interrupted, fairies, we'll show you what we do with steely and unaligned fairies. Jabir, kill them! Pharisee, I've got BS beside your token. Uh, uh, that's the Lingering Bard Song. Okay. Which is still still going. So it's lingering... I fly. Yep, with your own wings, not of any spell. So you flutter out and your My magic, own. all the spells you had running, like, comes back when you leave the anti-magic area. I cast... Who are you? Who are you? Dust. 
right here. Oh, this group? Uh, mainly I'm trying to get the beholder from behind. Oh. Glitter dust is that it, big? It those two, but sure. Uh, I think it's only 10 foot radius at first, I thought. Oh, uh, that's probably true. Um, let's see here. Oh, you're trying to get the beholder. Interesting. Yeah. Let me take a quick check on that guy. Yeah, 10 foot radius, yeah. <laughs> Please, play. <laughs> Right, it's just the head of the giant. <laughs> Please to continue. Uh, oh. Glitter dust, uh, DC twenty. Hmm. Twenty nine. She is glittery, but not blinded. But not blinded. She blinks for a couple of times. She smiles. She's so pleasant. Yeah. You're positively glowing, my dear. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's everything I can do. I live for the stage. Oh, my dear, the stage is back there. We would love for you to continue. Yes. <laughs> We can't have anyone interrupt our tragedy. We're on to something here, dearie. We're on to something. The Choker Brutes, I'm just going to uh, call Fair Escape as they run into the bowels of the building, the horrible little lairs where they hang out. Uh, the Angry Mob has been shown that the the giant is false and they are pissed and there's a glittery fae and their master told them to kill the fae this time they're throwing things and it's not garbage they're throwing stones they have uh they have items that they're also throwing this mob moves to here lovely lovely and you need to make a reflex save as they are uh, th throwing slings, stones. Um, some of them have crossbows. Uh, Ferrisay takes four damage, save for half. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do it? Uh, does a 20 make it? Yes. So you take two damage from... Well, I guess they were throwing garbage. <laughs> they're throwing stones and tiles and bits of the seats where they're having and bottles and uh your dr also applies so because they're not throwing cold iron so i i don't i don't have dr don't, cold don't iron. have dr okay yeah the other mobs are simply dis this one disappears into like the concession areas and it looks like they might be trying to get up towards uh where you were all sitting and then this mob it wants to join in the fun, but it takes them some time to move throughout the bleachers, uh, the stone uh, seats towards, um, well, the range. Zephyros, are you all right? He says to Ferrise. Oh, only my pride is injured. You've bested me, mob. Go and watch the show again. All right, so Zephyro starts the round and bleeds. Having bleed in an area where you can't cast healing spells is probably bad. Uh, and he's going to move back, not hastily, although when he gets to here, his haste kicks back in. So that's two moves before his magic kicks back in. Uh, he continues his movement. And then he has a single action and a haste attack. Which is not enough to cast a fireball. I don't think he has quicken. No, wait, he's he got his has quicken. A rod. He has a rod of quicken. He quicken fireballs this mess. Hell yeah! 
Uh, which, does that include the guy tied to the chair? No, he, he will exclude the guy tied to the chair by casting the fireball. Oh, I don't know. Oh, sure. Uh, against the against the wall. Bam! And he can only quicken third level spells or less. Is that correct? Yeah, lesser rod is third. Lesser rod? Okay. He didn't create a medium rod. All right, uh, give me a 10d6 plus 5. I got it. 37. That's some damage. Some 4s and 5s in there. That's some healthy damage. It is some healthy damage. It's a little below average. Uh, Not by much. Yeah, it'd be 36, 41 would be average. Uh, uh, I need to look up what the chair is. Mm. All right, the chair evades the fireball. It, right. it scampers out of the way from the fireball doing this circle, kind of dragging the guy who's tied to it around. All right. Pilt's, Pilt Swat Stole. Uh, I don't think he's evading it, but he might make the save. He rolls a nat one. Oh, fuck. Nope. <laughs> he takes 37, and then I think some of his gear might be uh, his crown. Yep. He rolls a nat 20 and his highly magical false crown. Uh, the garish bubble that is more costume jewelry appearing keeps its magic in form. It kind of looks tinselly. It should have melted by getting fireballed like in the head, but didn't. Um, there may be other illusions uh, afoot. And then the little jabbier guy, the gnome that's dressed in um, uh, executioner clothing, wielding a glaive. The glaive is cold iron. Makes his save for half, which is 18. Grunts in pain. Uh, so Pilts took the whole thing. Yep. All right. So the fireball rips off. There's not much. Um, there's not much that can catch fire up here. You're sure if Zephyrus kept going, maybe some of the tiles uh, and some of the walls. But he does scorch some ancient-looking frescoes into uh, uh, into burnt little ashes. And that was Zephyros getting away from Beholdera's stare. Professor, who is out of Beholdera's stare for now. Uh, I will spend three arcane pool points to augment spells I cast this round with an additional plus two DC. Okay. I am going to... Uh, that will be one action. That will be my one action swift equivalent. Yep. Uh, and then for actions two and three, I will do my dual spell casting. And I am going to start off with a silent casting of Visions of Hell, which I will try and hit people there with. All right, what's the area of effect of Visions of Hell? Uh, the area of effect is uh, 50 foot radius emanation. So you can get her and those bards up north if you want. Yeah, I, I may as well hit those guys too. Okay. Uh, I'll move it forward more. I want her to have to walk. I know she's super slow. I want to force her to be in this thing for, you know, at least one more of her moves. I can. All right, you center it at her back, and you've created this horrible vision of hell. There are um, 
slimy vines that crack forth from the stone and they begin to grab at things. The vines then sprout people heads that begin to scream. Question. Yep. Uh, with her eye cone, does wherever she look, does that just reveal what the non-vision of hell is? Yeah. So does she stand in a vision of hell, but every square in front of her is not hell? It looks like there is a cone in front of her that is not hell, but okay. her, but her but she, but her back end is big enough that she's she's in the yeah. hell, and she's got a okay. bunch of little eyes that are witnessing the hell all around her. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna rule that she's in the effect. Uh, got it. And uh, just to check here, she is not a devil or a lawful evil creature, right? I would assume as an oh, action. Uh, she is, she is a lawful evil creature. Ah, uh, then it will do absolutely nothing against her. Okay. Uh, but You know what? It says usually lawful evil. I would say as uh, an actress. Actors and actresses. I'm going to... Okay, all right. <laughs> Usual lawful evil. I'm going to say a seven or an eight. She's some on a D8. She's some other alignment than her racial um, alignment. Big money. No, oh, it's a six. Um, so yeah, so that doesn't do anything to her, but uh, these bards uh, have a DC 28 vision. Ah, she, she's, a, she's affected by it. I, 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 I like your argument that she's part of some insanity. Uh, <laughs> she's part of some insane acting troupe. <laughs> This don't feel lawful. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so she there's gets... a C in there somewhere. <laughs> she gets a twenty-seven on her save, though. She fails. She fails. Ah, DC is twenty-eight. So she's shaken while in the in the area. Yes. Okay, she looks worried. Our Make set it. design is much better than your current troop. Perhaps oh. you should join us. But we're on to something. But we're on to something. <laughs> really great acting, man. <laughs> the eyes were really Oh, yeah. That, was, <laughs> that sells it. On point. All right. Uh, so I will become invisible as I uh, just finish gotta, out. Just got to channel the thespian beholder. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You guys even kind of look alike a little bit. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Uh, so I will become visible, um, and as I do that, I will cast the second round of my dual spell casting, which is going to be Phantasmal Killer, uh, targeted at the Beholder. Oh, jeez. Phantasmal Killer, targeted at the Beholder. Silently, but I am visible. But I'm kind of peeking around this pillar, I guess. Okay, and the range of... She's within range, 140 feet? Uh, yeah, it's uh, medium range, so I can hit 200 feet right now. And this happens this round? Yes. Okay. The key on these saves is going to be 29. It's one higher than Visions of Hell. Okay. Uh, she's at a minus two because she's shaken because she's in the Visions of Hell. Yes. Come on, big money. Unless she's immune to fear effects. I'm looking. <laughs> then she wouldn't be shaken. So. There are no immunities listed. Oh, no. She took two levels of theater paladin. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I am afraid of the stage. <laughs> Twenty-four for the will save. She fails. She believes that her greatest fear has come to life. No! No! I was supposed to please you, Chimera Master, Lord of Melding Madness! Hmm. No! Mm, Chimera Master, Lord of Melding Shoots a fortitude save, too. An hour fortitude save to live. Come on, fail, die, you starlet. Ugh. 
she fails. Okay, and thus ends the CR-13 creature. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Alright. I'm going to redo that. Visions of Hell. What? What? Pil Pilt seems to be beside himself at this point. <clears throat> the Bards of Old Station... Uh, the ones, they, they actually, these ones ran kind of underneath, so I don't think they're in the Visions of Hell, they're running away from it, and they're kind of running in, in the building works itself. These ones are charging towards certain doom, triple moving like so, uh, there are no bards up here, um, Bertram, <laughs> <laughs> he he spends an action kind of half climbing half falling off the stage and is now pathetically pawing at the still deflating strange corpse of behold era he's definitely charmed or really really is in love with behold era Thurgus. She's special. Uh, let's see here. I'm torn between hunting this other dude down who's like so far away and going back to doing what my normal job is. Um, <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do the right thing here. I'm going to finish this guy off and then I'm going to head back. So <laughs> well, This guy isn't injured yet, so you're just going <laughs> to finish him off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the heart-seeking blade hammering you bring down. A, you bring up a good point, Marty. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to free action rage. Okay. With my destruction domain. And let me just add this really fast. I'm currently raging. And then I'm going to swing. Uh, power attacking, of course. Uh, so 42 to hit. 42 strikes at the blurry little creature hitting. Four. 49. Ah. Oh. I think what Bard Song a, might a, actually be down. What a terrible roll. Yeah. Uh, if Bard Song is down, then you can take two off of that. 47. 47. Okay, you injure the Jesterling really badly with one swing. Uh, I'll take my haste attack and do the same okay. thing. You lift the sword up, trying to spread, smear the creature across the wall. Uh, 53 to hit. <laughs> okay, if that kills it. Pop off yeah. its head. And then... Second action, I will move. Uh, I can get somewhere, I'm assuming, like here ish. Yep, this guy will take his AOO. He does have a pole arm out. Um, Do it. He's going to stab at you as you come in. My AC's lower, I'm raging. Ah! Apparently, so is he. Oh! AC 20 with his glaive. Clink! <laughs> I just walk into it, like when I charge. Yeah, he ha he has to like change his grip as as the polearm blade is uh, is uh, is down to his his hands. All right, so the next one, this is my third attack around, so it's at minus ten. Is that correct? Uh, yep. Okay. Um, and I guess the this king dude with the crown, he doesn't seem like super. Th he hasn't done anything threatening so far. Uh, I don't know if you could see him. He is invisible. I see invisibility. Okay, then he's got like a wand in his hand. Uh, okay. I will... Uh, I'm gonna... 
by attempting a disarm combat maneuver in combat. Okay. Uh, the little glaive fighter does have combat reflexes. He will try to hit you again. Who are you trying to disarm? The, uh, I'm to disarm the wand. The wand? Okay. Uh, AC 32 from Mrs. Jabir. Okay. Pilts. His CMD is. He doesn't have a weapon out, so he doesn't. Yeah, I'm just making sure I get the math of this right. 10 Fab, 11 Strength, Size Bonus, Minus Power Attack. Minus 10, because it's technically attack roll, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this goes down to 30 minus 10. as a 24 versus CMD. His CMD is 24. <laughs> I disarm his wand. <laughs> it, it, it lands sort of into the ground, or we'll see where it lands. Uh, 9 will be his own square. So it lands uh, one, two, three, four. It lands backwards, and it's on the padding of the chair. It's like he's like standing on this really big chair. So the wand falls down at his feet. <sighs> and then, so that's my attack, haste attack, move, and disarm. I think that's everything. Yep. Hide in plain hearing. I well, think, uh, when the behold there dies, uh, the illusion does come back and once more begins yelling, uh, Return stage! <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty obvious that they're not going to be returning <laughs> to the play as, like, some horrible creature out of hell is, <laughs> is yelling. Uh, I think the ladies... I think the ladies are retreating, but they do one final retort as maybe one or two of them recognizes Farisay and they're going to blast a yet another glitter dust into your face. So sure. As the, uh, and then the hide in plain uh, hearing choir begins to head towards one of the exits. They are singers and thespians. Uh, DC 17 will save Ferrisay. Uh, yeah. No, you're 24. just extra glittery. Uh, Pilts. Pink Throne, it's time to deal with him. Uh, he's going to step. You're still threatening him. Damn it. Where are you going, buddy? <laughs> time for the Firelands! That's what he yells at Thurgus and Jabir. Thurgus is just looking at him. He looks crazed. He's like foaming at the mouth. Okay. Thurgus or this Pilts guy? No, Thurgus. Thurgus is literally foaming at the mouth. He stopped me away from Callum B. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's a little burst of energy. We're going to call it chaotic strands and. Oh, first he has to roll. He has to do this defensively. His concentration check is plus 19. Very nice. 35. He's able to cast the confusion spell. Like you need a will save for me? Yeah, and I'm going to just determine his DC. The DC of the will save is 21. 45. Nat 20. Okay, so there were some odd thoughts. Asparagus, xylophone. What's a xylophone? 
Yeah. Right <laughs> <now>. oh. <laughs> Yeah, casting and confusion on a high will plus steel will plus raging bear. He, he, does, go he, well. he does not know you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Y'all don't know He me. does not turn visible, though. He's still invisible. Jester lands. Um, there are two of them. I think they... Deek back in the room to see what the hell's going on. Where's Pixel right now? Planted Pixel is tree. essentially there, but she is is essentially polymorphed into oh, a tree. She turned into a tree. Okay, got it. Yeah. Which should give her a massive bonus to essentially stealth as as a tree and stealth her disguise as a tree. Yes. They could probably get to me and uh, take a stab if they want. Yeah, let's see. They've got Ferrisay, Thurgus, or Zephyros. They're going to go after Thurgus, so they kind of do their sneak. They actually only end up back by the bubble. Uh, AC 33 and AC 33. Okay. Pretty good shots, though. And then this Jesterling comes to hear, sees his buddy is dead, continues his movement all the way to his buddy, picks up something out of his pouch, and then runs away. He's taking our loot! <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> 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 uh, Jabir is just huffing and puffing and trying to stab Thurgus with the glaive. Uh, he can actually right. he can actually hit Thurgus because he could target the back squares. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he will attack three times. The first one is at plus seventeen. And. He's just not strong enough. Look at the size differential. It has something to do with that. <laughs> yeah, ting, yeah, ting, yeah, ting. He might be strong enough to serve, like, to surprise medium-sized creatures. Um, but you know, when you're raging and your strength becomes twenty, uh, that's not that's not good enough against no Thurgus. Uh, Pharisee. Hmm. Let's see here. I. Oh. It's tempting. I, I want to take out that choir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't like the ladies that turned you down. <laughs> no. <laughs> They, they look like I they're retreating. <laughs> think I know, I know. No, that's... Um, I, you're you're, it's you're tempting. a witch. I, yeah. <clears throat> I'm not going to do it this time, though, because I've got the king here. So I'm going to... Steal his wand. Uh... don't have a quick and deal omen or anything like that i'm gonna try to finish it early mm, he's 70 feet away so i will move in to here and i'll say it's such a boring show isn't it just makes you want to close your eyes. Yeah, sleep hex. And I'll sleep hex it. Okay, does sleep have any verbal component to it? Any language dependent? Is it sonic? I don't think so, right? I, think I don't think so. It's okay. a supernatural ability. Okay. You're trying to sleep the gnome or the guy in the crown? The guy with the crown, Pilt Swastel. 
What? What? So boring. It's a DC yeah. 23. He gets an 18. <laughs> oh, that's not very good. He falls over in his chair. His thumb, which has um, a lot of, like, I want to call it scarring, but scabbing from being sucked on so much, oh. goes, uh-huh. goes into his mouth, and he curls up in the fetal position in his chair and goes to sleep. I think... I think this is our show now, gents. The angry mob is throwing garbage and stones at the shadow giant. I'm going to say there's a 1 in 10 chance that a something accidentally hits Pixel if I roll 1. Nope. It's just a bunch of garbage being thrown up. Uh, and this angry mob is in the uh, is in the hallway. You can hear their 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 yells echoing. Zephyros bleeds for 2. I might need some healing in a moment. <clears throat> yeah. What's Zephyrus going to do? Does he have a wand? He could just heal himself? I don't know if he's got the UMD to you cast healing spells. He might have infernal healing or something. I don't know what he preps in his first little slot. He's surely got a potion. Yeah, I'm sure he's got some way to heal. He's got a potion of cure lights, two potions of cure moderate. Okay, he doesn't like these things that were able to hit him, so I think he's going to cast mirror image in a defensive posture just to make sure that he's not. Uh... Yeah, that makes sense. For six images, uh, with the amount of bleed damage he has, his concentration check, he's not in any danger of losing the spell. Uh, it's only a minor nick. <clears throat> Professor! Please! Oh. I will. Quit. Continue the play! <laughs> Your performance is so mesmerizing. I must. Ah, the squealing of pigs and people screaming and the choir leaving, and yeah, you, you're, you're winning. Uh, I will quick draw my memory lapse wand. And then I will do. What is the name of the other one? Not dual spell casting, but magic combat that lets me use a wand and a spell in one turn. Uh, for mm-hmm. the wand, I will cap myself with memory lapse, and I will forget. Well, first I'll probably do. I'll do the greater invisibility first, then do the memory lapse. So that I don't forget to cast the greater invisibility. Got it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you cast greater invis. And then I'll take a move. Um, I want to survey around. I'll probably fly. Uh, like, sorry, ninety is one move flying. Hasted. Yep, hasted. Yeah. Probably like fly out and survey what's going on. Okay, and there there are pigs that are fleeing from your illusion. The crying Bertram, over the deflated body of Behold Era. Uh, there are some captives that are still uh, roped up. Uh, they might be conscious. You're not sure. There are two really confused uh, old station bards that uh, are just staring up at the the area where they can hear fighting going on but they can't quite see exactly what's going on uh the pink chair so the pink chair dumps pilts onto the ground waking him up it just sort of uh, his his wand or rod like device kind of clinks to the ground it then scuttles to face Thurgus so move action and then it's going to try to slam Thurgus Uh 
AC 29. Yep. One of its arms came straight off. There seems to be this uh, sticky kind of like glueish substance. It makes...